Now I'm reviewing this video. This video is by Big Think. There it is, almost 4 million subscribers. And their title, that they title, by Eric, Eric Verlind, accredited physicist, Gravity Doesn't Exist. Big Think. And, furthermore, why is gravity an illusion? Well, ladies and gentlemen who are not caught up on your model, your ball earth heliocentric model, gravity doesn't exist. It does not. Okay, so there's some degree of honesty which they try to sugarcoat. Gravity is 100% assumption. They assume it. Okay, it is all based on supposition. Now, the human condition of man is mostly beneficial, but sometimes, sometimes it can work against you, because man, they they have a, a, a they want to know, they have a, a desire to want to know everything, and that becomes a problem when you come face to face with something that is beyond reason or explanation. So what these men do is make things up. They make it up so that they can appear intelligent or smarter than other people. And that is actually ignorant because it blocks other people from further review or investigation or other avenues to find out what is the truth because the truth can be demonstrated. Gravity cannot be demonstrated. You are being ignorant by thinking that dropping a rock, timing how fast it falls, is demonstrating gravity. It is not. If you wanted to demonstrate gravity, you would be able to directly detect, identify, isolate, then study, and then, of course, harness gravity itself. There is no gravity itself, and that's the problem. If you or if gravity were truly doing all the things we are taught it does, it holds, pulls, or curves every person, place, or thing to the outside surface of a giant spinning ball, and even more, assembled that ball, every star, every other one of your planets, moons, asteroids, nebula, after the Big Bang, with some power of attraction, it would require presence and substance of gravity itself. They now tell you that gravity is the result of objects of great mass curving their surrounding space-time. Okay, well, after the Big Bang, there were no objects of great mass to curve their surrounding space-time to produce gravity. Okay, so that's a catch-22 conundrum illogical. Okay, to sit there and say that the big giant spinning ball Earth is curving its surrounding space-time, and that curve, curving of space-time, is what produces gravity that curves everything to the center of the Earth. Okay, well, they also teach that gravity assembled the Earth after the Big Bang and every star, planet, moon, and what have you, and their infinite and expanding vacuum universe. So, if an object of great mass is what curves space-time to produce gravity, what objects of great mass were present after the Big Bang? Now, let's listen to this guy admit that gravity is an assumption, it is based on supposition, that in between the moon and the earth, which is what leads them to want to ask, how does that work? They look, they cannot explain it, so they make stuff up. I mean, gravity, of course, is something that, has, uh, well, many people have already thought about it. It's something that we see every day, and it's not like <laughs> it's uh, not existent in our every life. But well, if what he said was true just now, something we see every day, then uh, he would stop right there and he'd be done. But that's not true. He's being intellectually dishonest, which you will see. What I mean by that it's an illusion is that uh, one would eventually... Like Let's start that over. ...something that we see every day, and it's not like it's uh, not existent in our every life. But 
what I mean by that it's an illusion is that uh, one would eventually like to know where it comes from, an explanation. Yeah, and again, that's because there is no gravity itself to trace back to an origination. There is no presence and substance of gravity. That's the conundrum this guy faces while in the hot seat. I don't even know if this video was supposed to be on gravity. He might have been presenting something else and someone asked him about gravity because he seems, he doesn't seem too happy. You know, like he's in the hot seat. Well, let's continue with what this guy will admit in truth. If you listen, if the truth is of any merit to you, you will see. Uh, up to now we have, uh, uh, well, descriptions in Newton, of course, <laughs> is the, the one famous for, for first writing down a theory of gravity. And uh, he could describe why apples fall and, and why the moon goes around the earth using the same uh, basic equation for gravity. But um, he described it. Uh, he had to assume that gravity was there. Okay, that's right. All we have, all they have, are descriptions. They have to assume gravity and then try to, to, to describe it. But the problem is that there is no force, power, or thing. No presence or substance of gravity. No current, field, wave, beam, ray, or a particle of gravity. Okay, it is all assumption and supposition. And that should be a problem to you proponents of gravity and a big giant spinning ball earth that would require nothing but gravity to have existed itself and to maintain trillion, a trillion gallons of water in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans to stop it from floating away, which is what they say would happen if we didn't have gravity, everything would float away. So there would have to be presence and substance of whatever gravity is, a power, a force, a thing, energy, of which there is not one iota of presence or substance of gravity itself. And uh, <laughs> then, then you write down a, a law that describes that when two masses are at the same yeah. distance, how they attract each other. But he was also not very happy with the fact that he should just well, assume that these things, uh, these objects, uh, attract each other and without even anything in between. So if there are two masses in empty space, <laughs> there's no uh, nothing that, that really happens between them, but still they're, they're attracting each other. See, that's, see, now if I was in the room, I'd say, what do you mean by still attracting each other? There's nothing there in between them. There's no presence and substance of current, field, wave, beam, ray, or particle. Uh, no exchange of any current, field, wave, beam, ray, or particle. No interaction. No nothing in between these two objects. So, why... How could you assume anything? How could you concoct or conjure something that cannot be demonstrated itself? He thought that was kind of uh, mysterious and, and that it was mysterious. something he would have liked to explain in a better way. Yeah. So later came Einstein and Einstein uh, with his uh, theory of relativity eventually uh, would realize that also gravity has to be described in a different way and it took him quite some years, but then eventually he wrote down a theory where um, he thought about the space and time together, and then his explanation of what gravity would be is that uh, uh, there's masses uh, which curve uh, space and time, and then the motion of planets and of the Earth around the Moon, or the Moon around the Earth, uh, is, is then described by um, thinking about moving in this curved space-time and how then objects are, are uh, well, making their, their orbits. And the reason they go around then in circles is that uh, that space and time itself is curved, in the sense that things don't move in straight lines anymore, they, they, they go around. That was his explanation, but he had to write down an uh, equation for it, uh, which again assumed that gravity is there, because he basically wrote down that, that uh, matter curves uh, space-time. Um, 
So in a certain way, that's still uh, a description, description, or you, what I should say is, well, one would like to understand again why uh, this description sort of, uh, well, how, how you can, can understand it from a more basic point. No, he, it's obvious that this guy did not prepare, or he would be saying other things. He's, he's doing everything he can to avoid not mentioning presence and substance of gravity itself. Okay, that's what this is about. This guy, look at his face, looks like he's either flushed or drank a 12-pack. He's probably sweating bullets. And it's, you, this is one thing a physicist does not want to be caught on camera doing. Answering questions about gravity. Okay, because gravity is the foundation of the entire heliocentric model. When you start admitting that there is no presence and substance of gravity itself, it's made up, and that's what he's saying. He's trying to say it in an intellectual way. And, and people who watch this video of mine will fight, kick, scream, and even bite if they could, because they don't want to realize this. Because to realize this means that your whole model is going to smash and crash and hit you in the head. Okay, to me, people ask me, why do you put so much emphasis on gravity? Well, they, you, put so much emphasis on it. You make gravity a god. You say that gravity assembled everything we look up, not only what we're standing on, but it assembled everything in the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars, all your other planets, nebula, meteorites, asteroids, Gravity did it through the power of attraction, attracting debris and particles that some big bang from nowhere exploded matter into existence and then some force power or thing assembled it all together through a power of attraction. So in effect, you are promoting gravity as a god, some sort of god, okay? When you really listen to what this guy's saying, the only way in a logical manner you can continue to believe in gravity is to do so by faith. Either faith in gravity or faith in the fact that you believe these men on the screen with their foreign accents are far smarter than you. Now, it is illogical to believe that gravity could do all these things but not express or exhibit one iota of presence or substance of itself doing it. Okay, that is illogical. That is why if you Google what don't we know about gravity, the number one answer is, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way, and that's because they cannot directly detect, identify, isolate, or harness gravity itself. There is no presence and substance of gravity itself to detect or identify or isolate, let alone harness. So all these guys can do is assume, suppose, and describe what they want you to believe is going on. In my opinion, it's okay to say we don't know how the moon maintains its altitude or height or if they want to call it an orbit, whatever. It's, it should be okay, but you cannot throw something on it and then teach that as a fact when it's not. It is clearly not a fact. Rewind what this guy is saying. They can only assume that it's gravity. They can only as suppose and then describe and make up symbols to make equations. It's... Uh, Mathematical symbol is the same as language. It's just symbols representing a G for gravity. That does not mean it's real. Okay? If I write down on a chalkboard, Raymond Ortiz has $500,000 and gave $200,000 to deposit it in my nearest local bank. The, the equations are correct. I'd have $250,000 back. If from a half million, I gave 250000 or deposited it in a bank. Okay, that doesn't mean I actually did it. 
how much would I have left? 250,000. Okay, it works out mathematically, but that does not mean it is reality. Okay, so they hide behind math. Okay, and I'm going to leave the link to this where you can hear, hear this guy fumble around a little more and uh, propose how his equations are going to suit gravity better, but then he admits it's just a description. We have to still suppose and assume there is no gravity itself. If it was doing all the things they say it did after the Big Bang and is doing now, it would have presence and substance to interact, engage, or engulf all matter on the earth to pull it down, to stop it from floating away. There would be presence and substance of gravity itself, like electricity itself per current, like magnetic field itself per magnetic field. My God, you people don't even know your model. You don't even know. You think gravity's real because you can drop a rock. No, that's just dropping a rock. 